It seems like for every book on management, there's 10 books on leadership. Yet without great management practices and processes and systems, all those great leadership skills could be wasted on your team and on your business. So in this video, I'm going to show you three ways that understanding the difference between leadership and management and what you should be doing in each area can help you to grow your team. Now, when we get the balance between leadership and management wrong, three things can go wrong in your company. One, we build the completely wrong culture. Two, what that results in is some of your best employees choose to leave. And even worse, your worst employees choose to stay because there's no management systems. And then that results in the absolute worst thing of all, you start losing customers. So let's talk about the three areas that you can focus on. First of all, we want to make sure you understand the difference between management and leadership. Now, management is all about creating productive and competent people. The way we want to do this, we want to manage processes. We want to build systems and processes and teach our teams how to do that so they become more productive and competent. Now, leadership is all about creating passionate and focused people. It's all about building culture and creating the environment that inspires people. Remember, motivation is an internal thing to people. What you want to do is inspire them by learning what motivates them and giving them the means to be self-motivated and grow. So the leaders of a business need to provide three things to their team for the team to succeed. They need to create a great environment. That's the leadership part. And then the tools and the training. So leadership's job is a combination of leadership and management. Leadership's job is to provide a great working environment and then the tools and the training, which are the productivity and competence. And that's the management side. So we need to make sure we get the right balance. Now, the second thing to do that complements that is we need to get great at setting expectations. People perform best when they understand what's expected out of them and not just what you expect them to do, but the outcomes you expect them to achieve. Right. We talk about ownership, accountability and responsibility. Well, a manager's job is to make sure that people know what they're responsible for doing and to know what the outcomes are supposed to achieve are, you know, the outcomes that they're accountable for. So we want to manage to responsibility and accountability. And then we lead into ownership and helping people own it and feel a part of it. And that all starts with setting expectations, being really clear and talking about them frequently. So it's reviewing expectations on both a daily and a weekly basis at different levels of granularity so that people know what's expected and people know whether they're performing or not and setting up the processes and systems so that they self-report instead of you having to micromanage them. What we want to do is create a micro process so that we can micro project manage things. And we want to micromanage the processes, not the people. So the third way to do it is what we call situational leadership. Ken Blanchard wrote a book on this called Leadership and the One Minute Manager. It's a great book on how to combine and balance leadership and management. It's based on the concepts of commitment and competence, or sometimes I call it skill and the will. And do people have the skill to do what you're asking them to do? And do they have the will? Do they have the desire? Do they, are they really interested in doing their assignment? And based on their combination of competence and commitment or skill and will, you need to manage them differently and or lead them differently. Somebody who has high skills and high competence probably just needs great leadership. Somebody who is lacking in one of those two needs different levels of management from micromanagement up through just daily reporting or weekly reporting and accountability. But at all levels, they need those clear expectations set. So if you want to be able to find that balance between management and leadership, I suggest you read that book, Leadership and the One Minute Manager, and learn the difference between competence and commitment and how to balance and choose when you lead and when you manage. So getting the balance right between leadership and management Remember, that's going to help us avoid building a negative culture unintentionally and driving away our best employees and having our worst employees stay and then driving away our customers. If you want to learn how to avoid all that, click the link in the description and go ahead and schedule a 15 to 20 minute chat where we'll talk about your team and your leadership and management efforts and identify where you can make an improvement in the balance 
that will help you get better performance out of your team and avoid those three pitfalls by having a great culture where your best employees want to stay and your best customers feel taken care of.